Hi, and so at the end of this video, I would like you to say, so that is what pivoting is in hacking. Now, pivoting has been named many different things throughout the years, just like box hopping, or you use another machine as the attacker, or whatever you can call it. The very basic way of explaining what pivoting is to draw three PCs. This is the attacker, which is beautifully written all over the box. Then we have a target here. Let me just write this is a target. And let's create a few more targets so we can talk about this particular thing. Now, when it comes to an actual exploit, we can begin to understand that we can access this target machine from the attack machine. For the moment, we have no way of accessing the other machines. No way. So the way we can do that is to use the target machine, let me just call it one. So target machine one, we can use that to send the traffic for us to the other machines. So basically, the target one machine becomes another attack box, another attacker that we control. We are not directly on that target one. We are using target one, deceiving it, making it to do communication with the other targets, target two, three, or four. Because target one can see those machines. That is how the network is configured. And from the outside, we could just not see it. That is what pivoting is. The way you're going to do that in reality, uh, could be many different ways. Let me come up with an example. Let's assume for now that you have this machine here. This is your attacker, like that. Then you have a web server here. Doesn't really matter which kind of web server it is, this is just the old theory. Then you have some sort of, you know, database server right there. Now, the yellow lines we cannot communicate directly with. We cannot communicate between these two medias here. So web server and the database server, they can communicate with each other because they are linked together. The green lines are us. We can communicate with the web server. This is just a typical setup. We have it all day long. Go to Amazon, go to whatever website, you're a tagger, if you're not a tagger, a user, will communicate with the actual web server. Okay? So, the idea now is to create these lines green. We can only do that if we use the web server as our jump machine. So, the pivot machine, right? So, we hack the web server and we can assume for now that we just, you know, got remote shell on it. We did some privilege escalation and we now rooted it. So I'm just gonna write root here. So we have root on the web server. So what we're gonna do now is create some sort of tunnel from this web server to communicate directly to the database server now. So now we can communicate directly with the base server, getting those results in one place to continuously communicate with each other. So now that we connected the two computers together in a certain way, of course, we can now communicate with the database server. So in reality, how could this look and how is it possible and stuff like that? I'm going to try and give you an example of that as well. Imagine that you have a network. This is the network, it's the green network. And then you have the, the red part of the network. Now, what you usually call this part here is the DMZ, the demilitarized zone. You know, it's very common that, you know, people from the cloud outside, let me get Draw a cloud of some way. We're going to use 
my beautiful drawing skills, can communicate directly back and forth. There are no way for them to go this way in here. That is not how we do it. So what you have here is maybe, maybe some server of some sort. Just write S for server. And that server got the connection that goes in and out of the demilitarized zone into the safe area. Inside the safe area, there's a router sitting, just like that. Now, the router, let me see if I can get you know, somewhat correct science there, <laughs> is connecting the inside and the outside network. So there is a public IP here, like public, and behind it, you have the private. Okay? The general idea behind network addresses is that the public is public to the internet. So we write the inet here. And the private is not accessible to the internet. That is the general idea. This is how it works. It is just not accessible to the internet. So the way you can get access to the private network is to get access to a server that have access directly to some other nodes that got access to the private network. Basically, that's it. So if you can hack this server right here, whatever it is, it could be a firewall, maybe it's not what you're hacking. Maybe what you're hacking is, is basically a web server that is located right there. That's the web server, W. So in some way, the router and the firewall allows port 80 and port 443 traffic to go through inside to the private network and access the web server, which is how it is solved. And the web server inside does have its own private IP address. Now, let me just write this down for you. It could be 10, 10, 1, 140. We don't really care about it. So that IP address here is not accessible to the public. It is only accessible by the private. Which basically means that what really accesses this web server is not me, it is an actual forwarding of traffic going through an array of machines and servers and routers and switches and whatnot there is. And then directly getting access to, to, to the request and then sending it back to me. So the whole TCP protocol layer, the whole ISO model, uh, the TCP IP stack. So go ahead and take the TCP IP stack if this is what you want. That's going to talk about five layers, application, transport, network, data link, and then physical. So going through the four top layers to get down, also the five layers to get the physical medium, but go through all these kind of layers to get down to the protocol level where you need to communicate on MAC address, which is inside the network and outside the network that is public IP addresses that is being routed. So networks are working with public IP addresses and the MAC addresses inside the network is being <clears throat> delivered directly or transferred directly by um, switches, what you call them, you're used to, right? So when people say you can route on an IP address, that is correctly. When people say that switches are delivering package by the MAC address, that is also correct. What is incorrect is that you route on a MAC address. You cannot route on a MAC address. Routing is reserved for the router, this one here, the router, right? And the router routes. This is why you call it routing. The router only knows about IP addresses and this is what it's gonna work with. So pivoting, what is that? Well, we have it on three different levels. You use a machine to access another, and I took a bit further so you can understand the network and the all idea behind it. I really hope that you learned things from this video, and if you did so, please write a comment below saying, I learned something, and I'm gonna give you a thumbs up. Okay, so see you again online, and have a really nice hacking day.